Well, hello there. It's been a hot minute since the last UAM episode, and I'm super stoked to be back in action again now that Leaks is over. And I'm sorry it took so long, and I really appreciate your patience, but me playing Leaks gave me the perfect opportunity on this account to do some efficient passive gaming. Right now, I just finished the grind from the previous video and getting some stuff from my death bank. And to freshen up your memory, last video I did gem art crafting for 87 crafting and 93 thieving. And I'm still gonna continue thieving right now, but it's not gonna be at artifacts anymore. I had to stop doing artifacts for now because I want to get a Pharo Scepter. And this item is an RNG item, so I have no idea how much thieving XP this is gonna take me to actually get the Pharo Scepter. So it's better to do it now since that I'm past 91 thieving so I can access all the rooms, but not like too late that I run the risk of getting 99 thieving before I get the Scepter. It can still happen though, but hopefully we get it kind of early. And I also bought a Dragon Battle Axe, because I want to also open the Sacrophagus, and that requires a strength level, so if you boost your strength level a little bit, your success rate is slightly higher here, so it's a little, uh, little UAM tech here with the Dragon Battle Axe if I don't have uh, my strength potions on me. And to speed things up here at Pyramid Plunder, I'm using an alt uh, essentially to scout the doors for me. At first, when I leave the pyramid, I already know which door I need to search. Because the, um, the mummy is only in one of the four doors and it stays the same for 25 minutes, I think. And after that, when I enter the minigame, my alt is already in room 3. So I need to get the first two doors uh, on my own. So this can take still some time. But after that, the alt should always just like lead away with the correct doors because then we are in the, the same instance in a way. So the doors will be uh, similar because every time someone else enters the pyramid, the doors will reset. And this allows me to get to room 7 and 8 like very quickly. So I still have time to also loot these rooms. And since I already need to be in these rooms uh, for going for the scepter, it is essentially zero time to get to these rooms for thieving XP. So the effective rate of looting these urns is actually quite high and better than artifacts. So it is worth it for me to loot room... Uh, well, a little bit of room 7. I don't always have time for room all of room 7. But uh, room 7 and room 8 uh, will get me some nice thieving XP as well. Hey, that is 94 thieving. And that is actually a very important level because 94 thieving is a no fail on master farmers with the Ardoin Heart Diary. And that's a pretty big deal for Iron Man or Ultimate Iron Man accounts. And I will definitely make some use of that later. But now we have to continue for the Scepter. Hopefully we don't get too many more levels because I still want to have some XP left over for the master farmers. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is none other than HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh is here to kickstart a new year of nutritious and delicious recipes and beat the morning blues with free breakfast. You heard that right? When you join HelloFresh, you'll get free breakfast for life while your subscription is active. We are talking one delicious breakfast item packed in your big green HelloFresh box. Now that is something to wake up early for. HelloFresh also have upgraded their menu to now offer 45 plus dinner options and even more market items for you to choose from to suit your healthy lifestyle. But what about those nights when your schedule is packed? HelloFresh's lineup of quick and easy meals is the answer. These 15 minute recipes have saved me many times to still be able to get a quality meal in after a long day of work or after the gym. So to start your new healthy lifestyle with HelloFresh, click the link in the description or use my code and get free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while the subscription is active. Thank you HelloFresh for sponsoring. So I just ran out of my monkfish that I still had from Sepulchre, so now I gotta use prayer potions at Redemption. And the sand views I still have are also still from Sepulchre, so I held on to those monkfish and uh, sand views for quite a while now. But I'm not gonna lie, doing this while being deathbanked and sitting on like 12 HP is kinda sus. Because the mummy can hit 6 I believe as his max hit and while you're looting an urn, I think the damage can stack. So I technically can get stacked out I think. Maybe but I'm not sure how redemption will like proc, maybe it already procs after the first like 6 but 
I do not feel comfortable right now. So I'm probably gonna just grab all my stuff from the dead bag because I probably need to do that anyway after this. So uh, we do not make some unfortunate mistakes here. So yeah, just taking out all the stuff uh, from the death bank. Like, it would be such a heartbreaker if I lost my Berserker Ring, Dragon Axe, all my arrow shafts. And I'm, I mean, pretty much everything here is kind of very useful. So I uh, would like to prevent that. And I also found this plugin that shows the percentage chance of getting a scepter for all the chests and sarcophagus you loot. But I was a little late with installing this one, so the 8% is not very accurate. It's probably like around 20% at this point, or maybe like 16, like double of this. I think on average, it was around 2 million XP with looting floor... No, not floor, this is not Sepulcher. Room 7 and 8. So uh, yeah, I'm probably like at 1 fourth of the, of the drop rate, probably. And of course, I was not recording, but I got the Scepter very early on, only like... 30k after the last clip, so uh, yeah, barely spooned on this scepter, which is uh, quite good because that leaves me more TVing XP or other methods, so I can get more herb lore or more crafting XP alongside that, so that is uh, pretty good. The scepter will be used for the occult altar in my POH, so I can quickly switch between Ancients and Arceus spellbook during Slayer. But I don't have the construction level yet to make it. And I want to make a little start to construction now. So buying myself the log basket. Changing out the layout of my POH. And picking up another plank sack. Then heading over to Fossil Island to do some 1.5 tick teaks. And now with the log basket and plank sack, it's actually viable to do 1.5 tick teaks for construction on Ultimate Iron Man. The old meta for UAMs was 3 tick brief teaks because the sawmill was so close by. So you could just chop an inventory, run to the sawmill, then fill your plank sack and do another inventory. But now that I can simply carry two inventories of logs with the log baskets, I can just then run to the sawmill once, make all the planks and then to go do construction. And for construction itself, I'm just making the mounted mythical capes for increased plank per or increased XP per teak plank. Normally it's 90 XP, I think. Normally a teak plank is 90 XP, and now I'm getting 123.3 XP. So that is uh, a little bit more, but um, it's still fairly expensive, around 4 GP per XP. But I'm only going for 80 construction now, so I can boost to level 86. So I can make the second jewelry box with the dragon stones I got from the crystal imps. And the second jewelry box allows me to teleport to the farming guild real quick. So that will come in handy when I start doing contracts. But with easy access to the farming guild, I can't really start doing contracts yet. I first need some seeds, of course. So I'm gonna steal a little bit of seeds from the master farmer in Draenor. And Leaks 4 starts tomorrow, so I am like barely in time to uh, set up my contracts. So I can do that while I play Leaks. And this is where Leaks started. I went and played it on my main and logged in to this account occasionally to do some contracts. But honestly, my setup was shit, to simply put it. And I couldn't really complete contracts effectively without having to skip and then needing to do master farmers or not being able to kill Hespori that well, at least without sacrificing time on my main account on the on leagues where I was competing for 200 mal. And that is actually a part of the reason I stopped playing my main on leagues since I just needed a couple more days to set up better on my UAM. Just gonna grab a looting bag real quick from LMS. Oh no, I don't have any points anymore. Well, I guess I'm just gonna smoke some bots in LMS real quick. It was actually kind of insane how many bots there were. It is like week two of leaks right now, but still, like... There were games that were just bots and, and me. I even managed to get a win. <laughs> but, uh... Couple points now on the board, so that should get me a while uh, into the future with the, the looting bags. I went back to Master Farmers for a bit now to stack up on some more seeds. And I think now is the right time to address the elephant in the room here. Herblor on a UAM. Normally people just spam a bunch of post-99 Master Farmers. 
do Corrupted Gauntlet for a Bova to kill then a couple thousand Giant Mole. Or just some other PVM like Chambers outside of the herbs and seeds that you get from Slayer to fund their 99 Herbore. And all of these things are things that I cannot do on this account. Well, I technically could do Corrupted Gauntlet into Mole, but that takes a lot of time to even get there. And it's not like a guaranteed time. I could go dry for a Bova. And then I would waste a lot of time. And even for just 99, doing that route is not efficient. And of course, post 99 XP is also off the table for a Maxcape speedrun. Since ideally, I want to get every skill to exactly 99 to not waste any XP and time. But this restriction makes calculating Herblore an almost impossible task. Also, before we get into the Herblore explanation and calculations on this account, Say hello to my friends here in their thieving capes and full rogues going after the normal master farmer while they also could steal from the stationary master farmer that I'm stealing from. These are definitely uh, real people by the way. And I trapped Martin the master gardener with an alt by talking to him and then he just stays focused on my alt until someone else talks to him or if someone fails the pickpocket. So that's why this only works if you have 94 plus thieving with the Arduin heart or 99 thieving with the cape. But it is quite nice that he just doesn't move. You can just always click on the same spot here and uh, drop your seeds and do some elking in between as well. There is 95 thieving. And now let's go over what I figured out for her war so far. I'm currently 74 Herblore, so a bit over 1 mil Herblore XP. And my main sources of Herblore will be Slayer, Herbivore from level 92 to 99 Hunter, and Barblore after I have all my potions. And these three combined will make up about 9 to 10 mil of my Herblore XP. But the thing is, I can't really do any of them right now. And you might ask why can't I do any of those? Well, Barblore is simple. I need the potions from Slayer and Herbivore first to even do it. Slayer is essentially locked behind 83 Herblore since that's the minimum level I need to make anti-venoms for the ornate pool in my POH. And Slayer just kind of sucks without it. And well, then you think, well, Herbivore is probably the best bet to start then. But the thing is with Herbivore, the herbs that you get from it, they will scale with your Herbal level. So at higher Herbal levels, you will get better types of herbs so more xp so ideally i want to have at least 95 herbore first before even starting that to get like the most herbore xp out of that which leads me to do master farmers but there's always a but with skilling on the uam doing only master farmers for the remainder of my thieving and herbore xp will result in me not having enough farming xp by the time i have 99 herbore because you always get less farming XP for herb seeds and secondaries than you would get for like making the potions from those seeds. So farming is always lagging behind. And doing Barblore and Herbivore also doesn't help the ratio of farming and Herbivore because I only get Herbivore XP from that, zero farming. And regular UAMs get all their three seeds for farming XP from Giant Mole with uh, the bird's nest that you get from Wizen. But yeah, I can't do that. Uh, I said earlier that wastes too much time to get like the shortest time to max possible. So to counter that I need to do X amount of farming contracts since I get three seeds from them like quite commonly. But that would also give me some herbal XP but then I need to do less master farmers again. So you probably get the picture right now. I have like five six different sources giving me an X amount of herbal XP. But it's just impossible to solve this Herblore equation with so many unknowns in it. So I've decided to just go for 83 Herblore for now. To at least give me the opportunity to start Slayer and work it out after Slayer. Alright, stopping the Master Farmers now, just shy of 96 thieving. And all the seeds in my inventory are a decent amount, but it will not get me to 83 Herblore yet. And also I have to be wary of not getting too many runner seeds because uh, I already have 3000 runner weeds um, in my looting bag or in my dead bank now. And I only have 250 snipgrass seeds at the moment so and another 250 runner seeds so I have way too many runners to make prayer pots from because I just don't have enough snipgrass. But 
that is why I am moving to farming contracts now because the ratio of Snapecraft seeds and runner seeds is like way higher at um, contracts than it is at master farmers. And also I have 53 quarm seeds and I calculated that I would need around 100 seeds to get me enough strength potions to finish 99 Slayer. So I will probably do contracts until I have my correct amount of quarm seeds. So let's ho head over to the farming guild right now. First I need to dead bank again to get the maximum amount of space for contracts. Then I'm just gonna take out the seeds that I need for my current contract from my death bank. Pre-plant some stuff and work on my compost stack again with the watermelon seeds. I'm gonna do uh, a lot of compost farming in the coming times. Because I would like to finish off all my compost I need for the rest of the account during this. If I can get a bottomless bucket that is. That is uh, still one last RNG item that I would need on this account for efficient maxing. And also picked up a herb sack, so now the real contract gains can begin. I also want to make a start with the herb run, so I'm buying some astral runes to then build the Caterby portal in my POH for quick access to the herb patch here. And every day I will try to kill at least one Hespori, sometimes I can maybe squeeze in two if I have some Chrono seeds. But Hespori is very important for this account, not only is it some extra farming XP, but also Hespori has two drops that I'm after. First, the White Lily Seeds. These are assigned for hard, medium and easy contracts, I think. So these are very necessary to have to complete the most amount of contracts during leagues. And secondly, of course, the Bottomless Bucket. Not only is this just like super convenient for making compost, because making compost right now is kinda misery with uh, limited inventory space. And it will also double my compost that I make, so it is actually very good to have. And I really, really hope I do not go dry on this thing, because that would actually lose me a couple hours from just the compost making, I think. And just the mental is also not gonna like all the compost. But what I do for Hespori kill is I just go to the Warrior's Guild, sip the potions from the store here. And then buy some food at uh, the cheese potato shop guy. And then head over to the farmer guild to do the kill. I don't really bother with the antidote. Because I don't think I'll need it. This should be more than enough food. And I, then I can just go to the POH again to clear the poison. But it is kind of sketch to do this like while death banked. Because there is a chance like I could die. Even though the chance is very small, but it's probably only going to happen if you DC. But luckily my internet is very stable. Probably need to knock on some wood now, but um, I never disconnect, so it should be fine. Alright, smoke this ass. Still have some food left over, so it's definitely fine to do it like this. So let's see what we're going to get. Oh, AD farming. That is also a nice milestone. And we got some Chrono seeds and a Runner seed. Well, the Kronos is uh, quite nice. I can uh, plant that straight away to uh, get my next Hespori maybe a little bit sooner. Maybe I should plant the Hespori seed as well for the next time. Another Hespori kill, KC number 4. We get some Quarms, nice. I need Quarms and some Atas. And I'm actually keeping the Atas in my seed box because I will be using them when I farm all my Snapecrafts because they have a pretty big impact on allotment patches. So that is also a big chunk of farming XP and just less Snapecraft seeds needed that way. I've been doing tree runs and fruit tree runs when I can, when I get more seeds from the contracts and to get my farming level to 82 as soon as possible. Because at level 82 I will be able to boost to level 85 with a garden pie, which is viable in the cooking skill. And that way I can do hard contracts, which are much better for like the good seeds. Shit, oh my god, I died to Hespori. Ah, I was just dead banking. Just got 82 farming, so I'm gonna clear out my inventory to make a lot of compost right now. I did farm a little bit of Hairlanders and now mine some Volcanic Ash to get a quick head start on the compost because otherwise I would need to carry the Volcanic Ash on me all the time when I wanted to make new compost. So I'm just gonna make a little supply of it and hopefully 
get the bottomless bucket soon, so I can then just make the compost with that. And now that I'm 82 farming, I have unlocked the best place to make compost at a bank, because the leprechaun is very close to the bank here. And last inventory of compost. Now we have 365. That should get me through a probably a week or something of doing some farming. So bucket, please. Took out all my valuable items from Hespori to put them in a looting bag because you never know. And also something I completely forgot to mention. You see the magic saplings here in my inventory? Well, to make the ornate pool you need the anti-venoms and for that you need the antidote plus plus. But to make those you need magic roots and the only way to get them is like by planting magic trees then chopping them down and get them. Or I would need to do a lot of Zora kills to hopefully get the drop of the antidotes plus plus. But I think the route for farming is just more consistent and it gets me more XP so... That is also something very valuable from uh, the farming contracts because otherwise it's not really possible to get five magic seeds. Now I'm finally fully decked out to do some hard contracts and I did save my Celestra seeds that I got so I can also make those into saplings and pre-plant them already. But yeah, basically I just take a bite of my garden pie, get a hard contract and if I need to downgrade my hard contract into a medium, I first let my farming level tick down to level 84, because that way I can't get a medium fruit tree, which is uh, otherwise a huge pain in the ass. Alright, just got another spirit seed, and I'm gonna plant this sapling now. And all the other seeds I got before this, I just traded into seed packs, because I didn't think the spirit tree was useful. Now that the construction meta is no longer uh, Prifteeks. Because for that you needed a spirit tree in your POH. But this one in the farming world does have a use actually. After I die from like death banking. I can... I spawn in Priftinas. And then I can just simply run north and take the spirit tree back to the farming guild. That way I can have my playground house somewhere else instead of Prif. Because normally my way to return was like after dying was to go to my POH. Then take the jewelry box to the farming guild. But now I can just do this with um, the spirit tree simply. So I can have my POH in Hosidius for Herbrands. Gave the smoke to another Hespori. Oh yes dude! White lily seeds. That is very nice. Now my hard contracts are actually just unstoppable. I can pretty much complete everything except magic trees I think. That is very beast. And of course, I'm not unstoppable. You will always be able to get Jained. First, I downgrade a yew tree because I always pre-plant maples. Then I get assigned poison ivy. And of course, I do have whiteberry planted. And you can't dig up bush patches. So I downgrade that one as well to get red berries. So we still have to wait for the fucking patch to be done. And I have to thief master farmers for this one. Thank you, Jane. Just got another spirit seed and a magic seed for one contract. And that is also my fifth magic seed. So that should be enough for the um, 10 antidotes that I need to make later for the pool. And I happen to be almost at 500 snapgrass seeds and almost at 90 quarms, which was my goal. So everything just lines up perfectly sometimes, which is very nice. So yeah, pretty much done now with contracts. And I'm planting this spirit sapling in my POH to also have easy access to my POH after death banking from Priv. And after another tragic Hespori death, I pulled out my Quarm, Toad Flex, Snapegrass and Watermelon Seeds, mined 4k Volcanic Ash and started farming. In total I have 8 herb patches to my name. I'm only missing the one from Harmony Island, and that one is not worth getting because you need to get a barrel set. So what I'm doing is that I'm planting like my more valuable herb, or the one that gives more XP, in this case the Quarms. I plant those into the, the five patches that are like the good patches, that have protection or increased yield. Then I plant all the, um, yeah, the shittier seeds like Toadflex, Herolander, into the other patches that don't have protection, like Felidor, Arndoin, and Mauritania. And for the allotments, I am just doing one Snapegrass and one Watermelon per patch, so I can always fill the compost bin with the Watermelon. 
Actually, never mind what I just said. Those full allotment and compost runs actually took almost 20 minutes and I would often miss like the next herb tick. Which was very annoying. And I also noticed that the Felador patch gives 10% more XP. It kinda is just a no-brainer to plant the um, Snapegrass seeds here for more XP. Because I will still be able to like go through them way quicker than I could go through all my herb seeds. And then I'm just doing the um, watermelon seeds at the farming guild with a big compost bin. That way my runs are not 20 minutes anymore and I get the most amount of XP from my Snapegrass. Felador Medium Diary actually gives the 10% extra XP. Alright, finished my Kuarm Seeds. And also I've been picking some coconuts to protect my magic trees in the future. Because I do not want a single one to die. Because I need the XP and I need the roots. So just uh, picking those when I can. And I have now 881 Kuarms. And that should be enough for all of Slayer for super strengths. According to my rough calculations. So yeah, on to the rest of the seeds. Aspori kill numero 15. And we get some more Atta seeds. Actually, these Atta seeds are just so good, man, for allotments. I already have 3.3k snape grass from only 250 seeds. So I can probably expect to finish at like... Uh, 6.7, 6.8k XP once my farming level also goes up a little bit. Oh yes, dude. Oh my god, baby. Very, very lucky and very, very happy with this one. Only 16 kill count from the bottomless bucket. It is a 1 in 35, so... Yeah. Could easily go like double the drop rate and just fucking not see a bucket for a very long time. But luckily we are lucky and got it on 16. Now it's time to put all my compost I have at the leprechaun in this thing and double the charges. And then really go hard on the compost making. I probably need to mine some more ash uh, in a little bit. So I can actually finish all the compost I need for the rest of the account. That would be uh, ideal so I don't have to ever touch any compost bin ever again man this is a relief to actually get that bucket holy i'm getting close to being done now with farming all my seeds and i just finished my snape cross and aventos and i almost had the perfect amount of um, snape cross for my runners and aventos because i'm planning on making fishing potions and i have 6k prayer pots and 1200 aventos but I also need to make 200 stamina potions with the uh, 600 MLA's crystal I have uh, as well in my looting bag. So the 1k Eventos plus the 6k Runners is almost the 7037 in Snapegrass. I just have 10 too many of the Eventos, but <laughs> that is kind of crazy how almost perfect that was from just be saying that like, yeah, 500 Snapegrass should be enough. And uh, yeah, it pretty much just was perfect. And there is the big 90 farming. That is going to be the last level because I only have these Catatine and Herlander seeds left to do. So yeah, getting close now. Picking up the last Herlanders now. And I also got all the farmable secondaries for the potions later. I got 680 potato cactus and 619 white berries. And in total I farmed around 1800 seeds I think. Which took me like... I don't know, like almost a month, like at least three weeks. And on top of that, I have a bit over 7,000 compost in my bottomless bucket. And hopefully that 7k will get me to the end of the account. But if not, then I'll probably just do some more compost farming with some snapegrass seeds I get from Slayer or something. But I, I think it should be enough. And that leaves me with one last thing to farm, and that is giant seaweed. I will need a little bit of these to finish off my thieving XP at some point, with some crafting alongside it at artifacts. So yeah, just gonna log out here a couple times and finish up these seeds. That was actually not true, I need to dead bank again after this. Because I didn't get my red spider eggs yet, so just doing that real quick now at the Tower of Life. Got 400 of them. And also planting the magic trees now, because why not? It saves me some inventory space in the looting bag later on. And here are all my herbs that I managed to farm for the duration of leagues. Actually 
quite a uh, handsome stack of herbs here. So that's going to be a lot of herb XP and a lot of EHP. And also before I forget it and turn all my irrits into unfinished potions, I need to unnote 10 of these because they are needed as an ingredient for the antidote plus plus. I have talked about so many times in this video. But yeah, you also need irrits for them. And it would be kind of troll if I turned them into unfinished potions and then was like, oh. Well, let's uh, thief some master farmers for an irrit seed then. If I uh, didn't unnote these then. But luckily, I am smart enough to know that. And there we go, made all the herbs into unfinished potions. So now we can start doing some herb lore. But I'll save the herb lore training for later. And I promise that the next video will be out a lot sooner than this one did. And next time I'll go over the playtime and stats once again. Because I think something messed up with the plugin that tracks the time at the end of the last video. And I want to make sure that it's like properly done. So I need to figure that out first. And in the next one, I want to get my account Slayer ready, or at least very close to. So some pretty epic grinds coming up on the UAM. So make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching once again. I'll see you soon. Take care.